Thanks, Tom. So what I'm going to do is walk through the basic steps for creating a simulation project in Transmodeler. Um, I'll create the road network geometry, input some signal timings, and input some turning volumes, produce some outputs, and show the, the reports and the measures of effectiveness in reports. And then I'll highlight a few other uh, features in a project that's already assembled that illustrates the use of Transmodeler with uh, origin destination matrices as as the input turning to, uh, sorry input uh, demand. So what I'll what we're showing here right now is just the quick start dialog box in Transmodeler six. So if you've been working with simulation projects on the the computer, the recent list of of models will be listed that you can quickly op open up, or you can opt to browse for a different project or create a new one from scratch, which is what we'll do here. So I'll choose to create a new simulation project. And when doing so in Transmodeler, uh, it, we advise that you first identify where on the Earth surface you want to create that project. So unlike most other uh, traffic and transportation analysis tools where you work in an arbitrary XY coordinate space, uh, Transmodeler is always going to show you a map somewhere on the Earth. Uh, and as long as you have an internet connection, you can pull up a map of a city or in North America an address. Um, so that's what we'll do here. I'll create a new map of a North American city, in this case, Charlotte, North Carolina. And Again, if we have that internet connection on the computer, we can ask Transmodeler to pull down background uh, data from a web service. So for example, you can get uh, the background for your map from OpenStreetMap or Google satellite imagery or a number of other sources. In this case, I'll choose Google satellite imagery, click Finish, and Transmodeler will open up that, that blank map with uh, an empty road network database in it. So I'm going to create, again, a new simulation database, which is just uh, a fancy name for uh, the road network geographic file that, that Transmodeler uses to represent streets and intersections. I'll create a new folder here. Okay, I'm going to call this database Concord Mills Road. Actually, Concord Mills Boulevard, which is where we're headed in just a moment. I'll maximize things here. I'm going to zoom out a couple of times and head north and east along I-85. For those of you who might be familiar with the geography in, in Charlotte, um, there is a large shopping mall south of a regional airport called the Concord Mills Shopping Mall. So I'll zoom in here and I'm just going to create a model of one of the main signalized intersections that enters this shopping mall here to the south of this road running east and west. So I'll zoom in a little bit tighter. The intersection is with the street called Bexley Way. and since we've created a new model uh, with an empty road network or simulation database, Transmodelers open the road editor toolbar for us. And that's what we'll use to create the streets uh, that we want to simulate. So I'm gonna create a major arterial, in this case with uh, three lanes on the left side and two lanes on the right. Just observing the imagery here in the westbound direction. We've got three lanes uh, heading west and two heading east. And since I'm going to be add, adding this new road clicking from west to east, I'm indicating two lanes on the right and three on the left. And each mouse click is going to add a shape point along the trajectory of the road that I want to create. So I'm just roughly following the uh, left edge of the lanes heading in the eastbound direction and momentarily I'll divide the center line so that 
we achieve a median between the two sides of the road as we can see in the imagery. So effectively what I'm going to be doing over the next steps is just using the aerial imagery representing existing conditions to guide me um, as to where I want to create uh, turn bays and things of that nature to define the, the lane level geometry. So I've got a basic road segment laid down now and I'm going to add a median. One click of the mouse will separate the two-way road into uh, two sets of, of shape points representing the, the two sides of the road on either side of the median. At this point, I'd like to be able to see the imagery underneath the roads. Right now, they're, they're highlighted in what we call an editing buffer, where you make all your changes before you commit or save them to the database. So I'm going to opt to show the roads transparent and just make a few quick adjustments based on uh, what I see in the imagery. Again, I'm going to adjust things a little bit to align them with the lanes, the travel lanes uh, on the left side in the direction of flow. Okay, so now that we've got our first road segment roughly aligned with what we see in the imagery, I'm going to save those changes to the database and then I'll proceed to adding the intersecting streets. So Bexley Way is the street on, on the north. It's got one lane in each direction. So I'll make that change and I'll assume it's, it's a local street. So the road classes that I'm choosing for each of these links that I add come with a default set of parameters which can be changed by the user. In the microscopic model, those parameters will uh, indicate say, the speed limit uh, on the road as well as which uh, movements have priority at, at intersections. So movements from a local street to a major arterial, for example, will, uh, will have to yield um, in the absence of, of any kind of control, which we will end up adding. So I'm indicating I want to make a local street. And again, I'll click somewhere near the beginning and click along the center line of this road and double click to finish adding the road. And if I want to make some quick adjustments of the shape of the road, I just added, you'll see Transmodeler's added some shape points to try and smooth the, uh, the curvature of the road. Those shape points can be deleted with the delete button uh, on the keyboard, or you can click anywhere along the center line to make adjustments of your own. Okay. So I've got Bexley Way here now. I'm gonna zoom in a little bit closer before I create the, the next road that enters the shopping mall. And before I do that, I'm going to pull the ends of the links at the intersection back a bit, remove a couple of shape points that will only complicate uh, the, the road editing. So one of the first steps when creating an, an intersection is to get the ends of the streets pulled back to the stop bars because that's where vehicles will stop in the simulation model by default. So I'll continue around to the westbound approach. And save my edits thus far. So we've got three legs of the intersection. The next step I'm going to take is to add an, an access road that has two lanes on the left and four on the right. Again, following what I see in the imagery as my guide. Click al along the near side of the median as I drag the, uh, the road toward the existing intersection. And when I get close to that intersection, Transmodeler highlights it to indicate if I double click there to finish my link, it will create an intersection with the other streets. So I'll do that. And just to quickly show you what Transmodeler is doing for us automatically as we add these streets, I'll turn off the transparent drawing so it'll, it'll be a little bit easier for you to see. So what 
Tom described as spider webs in the intersections are lane connectors that determine which movements are permitted from lane to lane at an intersection. Um, and these will also define the vehicle trajectories through the intersections. Transmodeler will use their shape and, uh, and geography to determine uh, which, what's a right turn, what's a left turn, what's a through movement, and which movements should yield to others. So all of that will be managed internally and automatically by Transmodeler, as well as where they intersect, where the points of conflict are, what gaps are acceptable, and things of that nature will all be handled by the model. So similar to Concord Mills Boulevard, I'm going to add a median for the access road here to the shopping mall, switch back to transparent mode. And I'm going to make uh, one more adjustment here on this northbound approach. Uh, and actually, let me do that when the roads are not transparent, so it's a little bit clearer to you what I'm doing. Um, we've got four lanes approaching this intersection. Transmodeler is going to try to make a judgment about what lane connectors are appropriate when you're adding new streets. But it won't get that right all of the time. So I'm going to make an adjustment or correction and adjust the through connector to the second lane and allow right turn from both of the, the right lanes. So I'll commit that adjustment. And next, I'll proceed to the, the uh, other legs of the intersection and add the turn bays. So I'll switch back to transparent mode. And I'll click on the Bexley Way Street, adjust the center of the map, because I want to see the extents of my turn bays. And with, a, with two clicks of the mouse, we can add a turn bay by clicking once where the the turn pocket is begins to be a full lane width and can store uh, a vehicle parallel to the in a, the adjacent lane. And I'll drag the mouse and click on a receiving lane downstream of the intersection. And Transmodeler will highlight the lanes that are legitimate connections. And that second click will add the turn bay, and we'll also add. Uh, an island separation for the striping upstream. Just a quick flashback to the non-transparent drawing mode so you can see what it's done there. I'll switch, switch back to transparent drawing. And I'll proceed to the eastbound approach where we also want to add a left turn bay. So a single click where that turn bay begins and a single click on the receiving lane. A right turn bay also exists on this approach. It's a little bit uh, challenging to see from the pavement striping where that lane begins. So I'll make a judgment call right about there. So I've got my right turn bay. And then westbound, there's also a left turn pocket. So two clicks will give me my westbound left turn bay. So I've got the basic geometry now in place. And if we want to spend you know, just a little more time with the tools, making the geometry uh, match closely with what's on the ground, we can do that. Um, this will yield dividends when you're showing the model, say, to the public or making a movie um, to help visualize a project but won't have much of an impact on uh, the simulation results. So they're, right now we're in uh, the territory of improving the aesthetics without necessarily changing the, uh, the model results. So I'm going to get the left side tapering where the eastbound approach opens up for the uh, left turn bay, make some modest adjustments, indicate where I want the end of the taper to be, and similarly for the westbound approach. Click and save those changes as well. So at this point, the geometry is more or less in place. And so I'm going to transition from 
defining the, the road geometry to adding the signal timings. So I'm gonna assume there's a traffic actuated signal here. Um, and I'll begin by placing signal timings into the model with the standard NEMA phasing. So I'll close the road editing uh, toolbar and open the intersection toolbar. And when we start working with the inputs at an intersection, we can provide three different kinds of input data. We can provide signal timings, we can provide uh, turning volumes, and we can provide pedestrian crossing volumes for each leg of the intersection. Today, I'm just going to highlight the signal timings and the turning volumes. So I'll create a new signal timing plan file and just point out briefly that Transmodeler's design is such that a collection of input files defines a project. There's no one file um, in which all of your inputs are, inputs are stored. And this modular design makes it possible to develop scenarios or different projects uh, different project alternatives that have some of the same basic inputs um, but can share and can share those input files so that you don't have to duplicate signal timings or turning volumes or uh, or other inputs across models in which those inputs uh, are identical. So I'll create a new signal timing plan file and I'll create a new turning movement table. We'll call this volumes. Before I begin entering the signal timings and turning volumes, I'm also going to take a moment to tell Transmodeler what kind of volumes I'm going to enter. Will they be AM and PM peak hour volumes or peak period volumes? Will I have future year uh, scenarios with forecast volumes, etc.? So I'm going to take a moment here to add additional fields to this turning volume table. So Transmodeler uses tables of input data in either matrices or what we call data views to store uh, input data or attributes describing features of the road network, such as street names, grade, uh, counts, traffic counts, things of that sort. And you have full control over the set of data that you want to store in your model. So you add fields and you rename fields. And these data tables will act something like spreadsheets where you can calculate formulas and you can sort uh, records and, um, and work with the data in, in that fashion. So I'm going to say that these are AM peak 2020 volumes. But if I know I'm planning to have a PM scenario as well, I'll add a field to store that data, particularly if I'm going to enter the volumes by hand from counts. Um, I want to make sure I can do that simultaneously for all uh, periods and scenarios. Let's say the forecast year is, oh, is 2030. So I have four fields now that are ready to store volumes. I'll just enter volumes into one of them, but wanted to demonstrate how you extend your, your inputs to support multiple scenarios. And that opens up the intersections toolbar. So to add the signal timings for an intersection, I'll choose edit intersection control and click on the intersection. And when I do so, Transmodeler is going to ask me uh, what kind of control I want to use model at this intersection. It could be stop control, I could add field signs, um, or I can add signalized control that's pre-timed or actuated. I'll choose, choose actuated control. And when I do that, Transmodeler will ask, which movements does it want me to assign phases two and five? Or sorry, which approach should I assign phases two and five? And phasing on all other approaches to the intersection will follow according to the standard NEMA template. So I'll let eastbound have phases two and five. And Transmodeler will create a table with eight phases, each representing the through and left turning uh, movements at the intersection. So I'm going to allow permitted green or, or 
permitted lefts on phases two and six. So by highlighting a column, I make that phase active in the view on the left. And from that point, I can click on the signal heads to toggle them between uh, different states. Or I can right click uh, and, and describe further the states of these signals, which may include transit uh, signal operations for priority. Um, we're allowing right turn on red on all approaches that can also be controlled here. I'm going to assume that uh, there's no exclusive left turn phasing on uh, from Bexley Way or from the shopping mall, but instead there's split phasing. So I'm going to delete phases three and seven. I'm going to assume there's 120 second cycle length and click on the ring and barrier tab where it's going to show me the an assumed default leading left uh, dual ring operation. But since I want four and eight to be served and split uh, phasing, I'm going to remove eight from that column, add an addition, additional column and place it in series following phase four. And if I want to make adjustments to the splits, I can do so here by clicking and dragging the boundaries between uh, the different phases. Alternatively, back on the phases tab, I can enter my maximum green times, my yellow and red times, extension times, and, uh, and so on. If I want to say this uh, signal is coordinated, Since I've moved phase four to follow phase eight, I've changed my cycle length. So let me scale that back to 120 seconds. Um, and before I forget, since we're simulating split phasing here, we want to give protected green for the left turns on phases four and eight. Okay, so I've got my basic phasing input now, um, although I should indicate which movements are coordinated. Let's say phases two and six are coordinated. If we want to enter an offset, we can do that. So we've set basic signal timings for our model. If we have a schedule of timings across a peak period that might change toward the uh, peak of the peak or after the, the peak before the midday, we can enter the entire schedule here and transmodel or simulate the transitions between timing plans. So I'll save these timings and close the intersection control editor. Um, the next step will be to define the detection for this intersection. So we can do that again with the road editing tools I showed you earlier. We can place detectors in each lane and, and define their setbacks, distances from the intersections and the lengths of the detectors and so on. Or if the detector layout follows a standard um, geometry, then we can indicate that in the detector defaults here and add all of our detectors and assign them to the phases appropriately with just a few clicks of the mouse. So that's what we'll do here. Here we've got uh, detectors at the call bar that are 50 feet long in, in exclusive left turn lanes um, that are 20 feet long at, in through and right lanes. And we have extension detectors placed 200 feet back from the stop bar um, that are six feet long. So assuming that's the design we want to stick with, I'll click OK and choose to add and assign detectors by clicking in the intersection. That adds the sensors, um, or excuse me, adds the detectors to the sensor layer. And I'll change their style so it's a little bit easier for you to see. Uh, them in, in the map you're seeing. Okay, so now these orange rectangles represent the detectors that are serving each of the phases. If we just want to confirm quickly that those phases, excuse me, those detectors are assigned appropriately to each phase, we can go back to the intersection control editor and see that the detectors now are highlighted in a particular way to indicate how they operate for each phase. And we can right click to see these detectors serve as call detectors during red. 
these detectors serve as extension detectors during green and in exclusive uh, uh, left and right turning lanes the longer detectors both place calls during red and extend the phase during green. So everything is in order now in terms of the signal timings. So with that, I'll transition to adding the turning volumes at the intersection. So there's an edit turning movement data uh, tool on the toolbar, and we can choose which field we want to enter the volumes for. So for the time being, I'll just enter volumes assuming an AM uh, peak period. So I'll enter first entering volumes for the northbound left. And I'll just quickly enter some volumes here. Moving on to the southbound left. Okay, so we've entered volumes now on all four approaches. If we wanted to enter the volumes for our other fields, representing the other periods and model years, we could add them to this list. And, and add them all uh, simultaneously. Alternatively, if we have turning movement counts that we've, that a contractor has delivered to us and they're in a standard uh, spreadsheet format that, that is commonly uh, obtained from contractors, there are options uh, additionally to import those turning movement counts from those spreadsheets. Um, in order for that to work, we'll have to enter street names and do some a little bit of vetting of that data, but this can offer pretty significant time savings uh, over entering all those volumes by hand, particularly if you're entering multi-period volumes where you've got, say, 15-minute volumes for each of the uh, approaches in each of the periods. Um, and speaking of street names, let me enter those as well because those will help with reporting and and the data management in general. So I'm going to click on my two streets uh, representing Concord Mills Boulevard. That'll pull up a data view with the attributes describing links. Enter the street name there and just copy and paste it to uh, the other road. Call this Bexley Way. And on the other leg, I'll call this Concord Mills Shopping Mall. Okay. So now we've got signal timings, turning volumes, and uh, street names. So all the basics are provided, but before we start a simulation, we'll want to tell Transmodeler um, what time of the day we want to simulate, what are all my various inputs to the project, um, and other settings. So we do this in, in a dialog box called the project settings, which is where we define all of our scenarios as well. So we'll call this the AM peak 2020. And if we wanted to add additional scenarios, we could do that as well. I'll skip that step here. Um, I'll assume we're simulating one hour between 8 and 9 a.m. Um, I'll tell Transmodeler that we'd like to warm, start, or load the network with traffic before we collect outputs. Let's confirm on the input tab. We have our signal timing file as an input. I'll add our turning volume table as one of our input trip tables. Transmodeler will let you list and provide any number of input trip tables you may have. Uh, truck matrices and single occupant vehicle and high occupant vehicle matrices and so on and so forth. Or if you're simulating based on turning volumes, you may have your background existing condition turning volumes and you may have additional volume tables representing say a, a proposed development. Um, we'll come back to that with the TIA 
tools a little bit later in the webinar. So I'm going to tell Transmodeler now that I'm simulating volumes from the AM peak 2020 field in my turning volume table. And I'll indicate also that I would like for Transmodeler to produce turning and intersection delays and control delays so that I can report um, measures of performance for the intersection. I'll also save this model, the simulation project file. And with that, we're ready to open up the simulation toolbar and run a simulation. We'll dismiss this warning. I'll close the intersection toolbar. And I'll speed up the simulation a bit. And we can color code different features in the map based on their attributes or, or characteristics. For example, the vehicles can be colored based on their current speeds. So the slower vehicles here now are red, the faster are, are green and yellow and orange in between. Alternatively, we can choose to color code vehicles based on how much control delay they've accumulated so far. So here, green vehicles approaching uh, a queue at an intersection have experienced none, and the longer they sit at the light, the more yellow, orange, and red they become as they accumulate control delay, which ultimately gets recorded for reporting after the simulation. And it's also useful to color code vehicles based on their next turn, so you can see and observe why vehicles choose to form cues in the lanes they, they utilize in the model. So now I'll minimize the map so the simulation can run as fast as, as the computer can push it. And we'll let the simulation finish and I'll show you one report. Um, and then we'll transition momentarily uh, back to Tom. Once I highlight uh, another example based on uh, trip matrices. So we've run one simulation now and we can open the output manager in Transmodeler, which will sort through the raw data from all of the simulation runs we've run in a project and produce one of a number of reports summarizing delays of various kind, delay by approach or by movement or by intersection. So for example, if we're interested in the intersection level of service um, for this intersection, we can produce a summary report or we can look at the statistics uh, summarized into smaller intervals, which may be more interesting if we had multi-period volumes. But let's just show a quick summary report for our intersection, uh, summarizing level of service and con based on control delay uh, for all approaches. So this is the intersection level of service report indicating average control delay of 22 seconds per vehicle or level of service C according to the highway capacity manual. So for nearly all facility types in the highway capacity manual, uh, you can produce reports of level of service based on the same performance measure, but that performance measure is produced by the simulation rather than by the uh, the deterministic methods that Tom described earlier. So that's just a quick run through uh, the development of a project, running simulation and producing outputs. Now, if we zoom out just a bit here, just north of this regional airport, north of uh, Charlotte, is a corridor made up of a roundabout, a median U-turn intersection, a diverging diamond interchange, and more median U-turn uh, intersections. So a lot of sort of these novel intersection designs, and Transmodeler is frequently used to simulate these types of facilities um, around the US. So I'll highlight, this, is, this corridor is actually one of the tutorials that installs with Transmodeler. And the inputs to this model are based uh, on a matrix of volumes rather than turning volumes. 
The trans modeler simulates the root choices, if there were any, um, in the model. So if I choose to browse the cells in this matrix, then each cell that I click on will highlight the movements through the model from that the corresponding origin and destination. So you can see the paths following uh, the U-turns through the median U-turn intersections. So I'll just show the simulation in action briefly, and then I'll hand it back over to Tom to talk about the HCS integration. So here we see the simulation of a diverging diamond interchange or DDI. And I'll just point out, so I showed you the tools a moment ago for entering signal timings. Same can be done for multi-node uh, controllers, such as diamond interchanges. So here we have the signal timings for the entire interchange in one timing plan, where each of the phases can indicate movements that are given green at more than one intersection. Similarly, we'll see the median U-turn operations and the roundabout operations. And once a project is open, if at any point we want to pull down that background content from the web, we can do so from the map menu. So if I want to grab the high-resolution aerial imagery from Google Satellite into this project, I can do that here. and wait patiently for Google Satellite to, to oblige. Okay, so that's a quick run through of uh, developing simulation projects and, and Transmodeler hopefully gives you an idea of the basics. Um, Tom, if you're ready, I'll, I'll hand it back over to you for the next step.